this summarizes what we have done so far on the well stirred reactor where, where basically we have considered a global mass balance um, over a control volume and a global energy balance so effectively you now get uh, a, a set of n equations which you can now say okay one equation is a sample for the ith species there uh, which contains your yi out which could now be just simply called as yi as, as, as uh, the n variables okay or the one sample variable for this equation uh, but then uh, we also understand that omega i is going to be a function of temperature therefore we need another equation to uh, close this which is now the global energy balance and the global energy balance again involves um, uh, the yi's okay so it, it is it is now coupled with the, with this one so unless you solve this we can't solve this unless we we solve this we can't solve that and uh, uh, then we now, we now see that the hi's are the ones that are con containing the temperature sitting on top here okay so of course you could you could make a calorically perfect gas assumption and say this is like linearly in temperature and so on if you want to simplify your life but uh, if you want to do the hardest work then you keep the integral do polynomial fifth, fifth degree sixth degree polynomials for CP and uh, go on integrate and all those things and so on okay so that is the two equations and two unknowns but however I would like to point out or maybe you should be asking this question to yourself omega i is not only a function of temperature but it is also a function of concentrations okay whereas uh, concentrations of species okay so this is actually a function of um, c i comma t okay so but omega is a function of c i comma t uh, but we do not we have not really had c i's as our unknowns we have been having y i's as our unknowns okay so we need to supply C i here right so there must be some sort of a relationship between Y i and C i to close that set so you could, you could look at this as you are now actually having C i as another set of unknowns so it is actually 2 n plus 1 um, unknowns and equations uh, so you need to have another uh, n equations that relate Y i and C i so that is basically given by Y i is equal to C i capital W i divided by sigma uh, j equals 1 to n uh, cf uh, c i am sorry cj capital wj okay so this is this is like uh, you, you any time you try to find a yi you have to find a ci out of it and then plug it back in the omega i and uh, use it there and so on so this is this is i equals 1 to n as well okay so previously I, I mentioned that uh, in some of the problems where we want to size the combustor right we want to know the volume rather than input the volume okay so the, the, the volume is now like the, 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 the thing in question so therefore uh, you now try to redo this problem a little bit by saying sometimes sometimes a residence time is defined as residence time is defined as tr is equal to rho v divided by m dot how do you get this m dot um, m dot times the time it takes is like the uh, mass mass flow into it the, the total mass flow into it that should be equal to the density of the mixture times the volume the mixture occupies okay that will be the mass that is contained in it so if you have a m dot kind of mass flow rate that is coming into this volume over a time of tr during which it is supposed to reside in this volume m dot times tr is the mass that is into this volume that should be equal to rho v right so um, with of course um, rho given by the equation of state where we now say this is equal to uh, p times w mix divided by r u t you now begin to see the molecular weight a lot more okay previously we were dealing with 
moles and we were always looking at the universal gas constant but now the molecular weight kind of tags along because we are now beginning to do things on a mass basis okay. Uh, so here W mix is the mixture molecular weight that is defined as uh, it is not really defined you can actually calculate this uh, this way. Um, so this is this is obtained by a, a mass weighted uh, approach so this is like 1 over sigma i equals 1 to n yi divided by wi this is again a statement of mass conservation okay. So if you take like 1 mole of the mixture and uh, look at its mass constituents each of which has uh, different molecular weights okay how will the number of moles of each of those pan out and uh, then you now add the number of moles and so on okay so that is how we are uh, trying to do this. So it, it, this this can be derived but I am not going to derive this for you just, just stated it. So if you, if you do all these things then here uh, in this problem in this problem we are given We are, we are given m dot that is like the throughput that we want to achieve V or TR okay and uh, Q dot okay. So if you now have uh, TR you can try to find out V and so on of course I guess you also are given P so and NP so the pressure at which you want to do the work uh, to do this do this problem and uh, then you can actually have a relationship between um, so T is a variable okay, to, to be evaluated and um, so you can actually have a relationship between TR and V okay and um, what else that is about it okay so if we get uh, uh, m dot is given this is given this so you just have to go ahead and solve this okay. So we, we have uh, so if you want to now count 1 um, let us say 2 and 3 okay uh, 1 2 and 3 actually gives you 2n plus 1 equations we are interested in uh, in obtaining yi comma t that is n plus 1 quantities right uh, that means if it is possible for you to eliminate your ci's okay uh, for 2n plus 1 equations for yi ci and t that is 2n plus 1 variables just as well uh, but we are interested in these ci and yi they do not really give additional information okay but you, you, you just have to go through that. So um, what typically happens in this case is uh, you could you could do this problem in a, a, a multiple ways depending upon what you are looking for as I said the other day okay uh, so essentially these are algebraic equations you, you, you notice that right? so, so um, 1 2 and 3 are all algebraic equations but they are nasty algebraic equations okay. So this is this is going to be a very nasty looking expression in temperature. Uh, first of all and then you have this t sitting on top of this integral and all that stuff so this is this is not going to be a very easy equation to uh, set of equations to solve um, okay so what would we do with this we can do a couple of different things one um, for example you, you now say let us let us look at uh, these as, uh, parameters in the problem all right and if I am now allowed a certain m dot I, I fix that and, and certain p and I, I now um, say I, I will allow a certain q dot that is fixed 
okay that is like a heat loss to the surroundings if you want or if you want this this uh, reactor to be heating something else like, like let us say in an, in an external combustion engine where you have a combustion chamber that is giving heat to like say, let us say a water to get converted into steam or something like that you want certain Q dot okay. So let us suppose that you can put that there and so on now but you want to make sure that your combustion is complete okay. So what you then do is you now start varying your TR. So as you now keep on varying your TR you now get for each value of TR you now get your YI and T and then you now can plot your YI and T as a function of TR okay YI and T are actually not functions of pretty much anything there, there are no independent variables here we are not looking at time or space nothing okay these are parameters in the problem. So you, you now vary your TR you can now get your, um, your species uh, and temperature to, to be calculated as function of TR and then plot this. What you should find is beyond a certain value of TR these things will stop varying right. You can also think about it like it is as if like giving more and more volume okay, essentially it is like you now have like a let us say large pipe and then you are basically looking for how long this pipe should be for your reactants to become products larger the, the, the longer the pipe larger the volume and greater the residence time. So if the reactants are actually become products somewhere here but your pipe is still longer okay the products are going to continue to remain that way and what you are going to get out will be the same as if you were to add truncated your pipe somewhere here you see. So if you were to increase your TR your answers are not going to vary further on right that means you, you, you can actually decide what should be the right residence time by the time these things now level off to some value beyond which you do not have to worry about. So that is like the way you, you size your combustor you now say this corresponds to a certain volume and therefore I will I will now get my length for this diameter and so on okay we cannot we cannot distinguish between diameter and uh, length that is that that is that is a no no because we do not know how what is happening inside okay. So you, you fix your diameter by some other consideration or the lateral distance then you can get a length out of it and so on because you can estimate a volume. Uh, for complete combustion okay. So uh, one of the ways of doing this is uh, by uh, beyond uh, beyond a certain certain uh, TR or V uh, YI and uh, T stop varying. this means no further change no further change uh, in the uh, in the reactor for uh, the extra volume or residence time. provided right so this is used uh, to size the combustor or okay we will just stick to the word reactor as if you are chemical engineers okay uh, that is fine. Another thing that you could do is let us suppose that I had a reactor all right I, let us suppose that I had a reactor and my question is how much M dot can I can this reactor handle can I dump more and more reactants at it all right. So that is another way of looking at it so essentially the point basically is these are parameters you could vary them 
and you, you can now fix a few things you can vary one of them to see what is the effect of it. So another uh, meaningful uh, variation is to actually keep varying your m dot given other things okay so beyond a certain m dot I, I mentioned this earlier beyond a certain m dot uh, the equations do not converge to a solution. When you say converge it implicitly means that you are going to solve these things numerically okay with an iterative approach it is like um, this is like chicken and egg problem I do not know uh, omega i I cannot get my y i so I do not know my y i so I cannot get my t and so on right and do not even think about solving this simultaneously like you used to do in your uh, middle school um, simultaneous simple algebraic equations to equation to a known system right. So obviously what you are going to do is say iterative you start with some guess right and then uh, plug that in there and then see uh, get an answer for the next iteration and then and so on and of course if you keep doing this blindly you are probably going to go haywire okay so your starting guess must be pretty smart okay and then you need to look at some things like uh, method of steepest descent towards the solution and so on so you have to adopt even as a matter of fact Newton Raphson method kind of thing is uh, sometimes uh, too simple for these kinds of solutions uh, the, okay that, that are required here. So ultimately but basically what I am saying is you, ha you are looking for a numerical solution that means you have to converge to, to a, a set of um, answers for you so you may not converge all right. So that, that simply means um, as far as this model is concerned is a, a blowout that means these equations just simply cannot be satisfied for um, the set of parameters that we are looking at all right the typically the way you do this is you you start with some m dot and then keep varying okay until you hit a point where you cannot get a solution then you know that beyond this point the flame would not sustain this is essentially what it really means okay. So that, that, that becomes a meaningful exercise so it is, it is like it is not like uh, you, you just take, took some um, set of parameters here and then just juggle with uh, varying the m dot take, taking like 2 m dots and like let us say take 2 pressures and all those things that is not the way you do you have to systematically do so that you approach the no solution situation and then you know that you are approaching m dot in a, in a physically meaningful manner. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to point out a couple of things uh, in what we have done here, which are uh, uh, which are somewhat unique or interesting. One, the notion of residence time is a, is a very powerful idea. Okay. Regardless of how complicated an analysis that you want to do or not, uh, this gives you a, this gives you a, a a first cut idea. So, for example. One of the problems with uh, scramjet combustors like um, supersonic combustion okay is lack of residence time okay or, or inadequate residence time so because you are looking at a very fast flow that is coming in uh, which is uh, decelerated to uh, let us say Mach 1.62 something like that 1.62 some, something of that sort um, and still you are looking at supersonic flow and um, then you, you now have to inject sometimes um, if you are unlucky you have to inject liquid fuel and then that has to actually get atomized and then uh, get into droplets and then vaporize and then mix uh, and, and then burn okay so keep doing all these things you are out of the combustor because the flow just does not want to stop all right or if you really stop the flow for all these things you are not going to fly <laughs> okay. So the, the, the residence time is one of the key ideas in, uh, in uh, most of the combustor designs that you want to think about okay. So this is a powerful idea that comes out of uh, the, this, this analysis. The second thing that I would like to point out before we get to the next thing which is the plug flow reactor is in 
whatever we have done so far in combining the thermal and uh, chemical uh, processes uh, so far which is constant fixed mass reactors both constant pressure and constant uh, volume and uh, the well stirred reactor on an open flow system is we have primarily considered only two conservation laws one is energy conservation the second one is species mass conservation okay in some sense you will find this approach recurring as a recurring theme in most combustion problem approaches or in other words you always think about doing the combustion part what is special about combustion in addition to just a flow situation is primarily two things one first of all you have to deal with multiple species and therefore you have to conserve the mass of each of those species. So you now are having to deal with a species a set of species conservation equations in addition to that you, the, it is directly coupled to the energy balance because the reaction rates depend on temperature and you need to know what the temperature is through the energy balance which in turn will depend on the species for the heat release so they get coupled okay many times you will find that it is possible to decouple this set of equations from the flow set of equations therefore then you will now be able to identify that the flow equations are like a standalone and the combustion equations can be solved after you have solved the flow equation and plugged in the velocities here for the convective effect of the species and the temperature or and the enthalpy okay. So in some sense the, the, the you can now say that is a flow problem and this is the combustion problem right. So if you were to basically look at something like convective heat transfer of incompressible flows you will understand that this kind of thing happens there and there what you would say is you can solve for the flow which is decoupled from the energy balance and you can now plug the flow field that has been solved from the flow into the energy equation to get the temperature field and from there you can get the heat transfer that is heat transfer kind of approach this is similar here except that in addition to the energy equation which is going to be complicated by the presence of multiple species and reactions and so on we also have to take into account the species mass conservation equation set and this constitutes the combustion problem mostly. So most of the time we will always be worrying about two things species mass conservation equations and energy equation this is like pretty much the combustion problem there are some occasions where this will get tightly coupled with the flow problem there are lots of other occasions which we will be looking forward to where it gets decoupled therefore we do not worry about the flow, flow problem we outsource that to a fluid mechanics person <laughs> okay so to speak you get the flow field and then you can solve the combustion problem. So what we have been doing is the combustion problem the reason why um, I am stating that now is the, the, the moment you actually step into the plug flow reactor we are now going to actually keep it keep track of what is happening in space and what is going to happen in space will all will primarily be influenced by how the velocity of the flow is going to change in space relate uh, um, in relation to how like let us say a, a quasi one dimensional manner the, the, the duct area changes okay. So we, we, we will go back to something that is familiar in our gas dynamics where uh, if you now have like an area decrease the velocity increases and, and so on so the velocity is changed so the velocity now comes into picture that means we have to bring in a momentum equation okay whereas we have never bothered about momentum so far okay. So typically this is combustion where we do not have to worry about momentum equations but for the plug flow reactor we will do that okay. So let us now look at the plug flow reactor. PFR so as I said if you wanted to have a PFR rhyme with the well stirred reactor you would want to call it perfectly stirred reactor and call it PSR 
okay uh, but this is PFR no 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 changes in uh, how we want to do this. So here the model that we are looking at is you now have a, a variable cross sectional area situation so A equals A of X where X is going in the predominant flow direction we do not want to entertain any other flow direction the flow is actually turning around and all those things to go along with the walls and so on we are oblivious to it we would we will keep our eyes shut okay instead we will actually be looking at a velocity which is a quasi one dimensional velocity the quasi one dimensional velocity is not a real velocity okay it is not directly it is not the same as the axial component of the actual velocity because in reality when the flow turns there is a certain mass that is associated with going that way okay but we will conserve mass as if things are all going only this way okay. So our quasi one dimensional velocity will have to conserve mass only in one direction so that velocity is not the same as the axial component of the actual velocity okay. So this is the way we will do this and of course many times I find that gas dynamics teachers who actually deal with this do not emphasize this particular point and then we always get confused when we want to get back to our reality comparing experiments and so on okay we will get discrepancies the reason is we will have to keep this in mind okay. So um, what we will do is again look at like a, a local control volume and uh, look at something like a Q dot double prime notice the double prime that is coming up we never had a double prime so far okay. So what this really means is this is the heat flux so far what we have had is oh the Q dot is is in is in watts okay this is basically the rate at which heat goes out this is joules per second that is watts this is like the power okay this is heat flux that means it is watt per meter squared. So since it is meter squared you have double prime okay so it directly goes with the number of linear dimensions over which you want to normalize okay. So if you had a Q dot triple prime you can imagine it is like a volumetric heat loss or heat release whatever okay that is typical of, of this, this trade this, this is the way we would uh, 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 not, notate the, 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 the heat flux okay. So here we are saying that you now have a velocity that we will have to worry about keep in mind we are now introducing a V this is velocity okay previously we have been using a small V that stood for 1 over rho that was like specific volume we now change okay the same symbol is used as V very 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 rarely do you come across a formulation that uses both the specific volume and the velocity when you are now getting into things like velocity you are looking at a open flow system and you will always use rho okay you do not have to worry about uh, specific volume at all and uh, things are all done on a mass basis you would not really use the uh, equation of state on a molar basis and so on so uh, we should not have any confusion from this point on uh, so similarly we now say P equals P of X uh, T equals T of X rho equals rho of X Y i equals Y i of X okay i equals 1 to n we have to keep track of spatial uh, one dimensional spatial variation of n species along okay that is that is how we want to do this. Okay, so um, assumptions. First is steady flow. What goes in should come out right away. 
um, right away is the key point that means there is no accumulation or depletion okay um, quasi 1D flow um, that means the V velocity is equal to uh, V of X I vector so this V of X that we are talking about is a quasi one dimensional velocity it is not the axial component of velocity in the real flow um, we now assume um, no mixing in the axial direction All right. that is to say yeah of course we are keeping track of things as a function of x right so if you now had a yi as a function of x and yi changed as a function of x then you will have yi gradients in yi okay so you will have gradients in concentration so if you have gradients in concentration does this mean that it is going to drive some mixing as we will see soon okay because mixing is driven by concentration gradients similarly um, temperature gradients will lead to conduction okay velocity gradients will lead to viscous effects we won't worry about all that stuff okay we won't worry about any axial transport processes in this formulation okay transport processes me meaning uh, species mixing viscous effects and heat conduction so that is for mass momentum and energy transport we won't worry about uh, any of those and since we are actually saying that the velocity is only in one direction we are also assuming that there is an instantaneous mixing that is going on in the perpendicular direction all the time that means we we are oblivious to any variations of anything in the transverse directions let alone concentrations that means the, the, the concentration that you are looking at is supposed to be represented representative of the entire station it is supposedly the same along the entire station that means it is all got mixed okay no gradients okay so that means th this, this actually assumes instantaneous mixing in the transverse direction. right this is what I said right at the beginning when we are neglecting mixing it is because we say that it is not there or too much of it is there either way okay so you can you can neg neg neglect something if it is not there you are not neglecting there is nothing to neglect okay it is not there so you, you cannot even neglect okay essentially as far as the axial mixing is concerned you are saying it is almost negligible why would you say that that is because we are looking at a convective situation okay so even if you are thinking that for example you had a gradient and therefore you will have a species that is trying to actually mix okay you have the convective effect that is bringing it back so axial, diffu axial diffusion ax axial mixing typically loses when you now have a reasonably large convection and this is given by Peclé number similar to uh, how you would use Reynolds number to decide between inertial effect and viscous effects okay for, for the momentum balance okay so when you now have a significant amount of flow we do not have to worry about this that is to say it is small it, it can be neglected the other thing where you are saying that you are having an instantaneous mixing and therefore you are mixed you are neglecting is to basically assume that you have too much of it okay so you, are, you do not have to worry about it so this is also true in our lives when we have too much of something you take it for granted you do not even think that it is there okay so if you have like wi-fi everywhere uh, you do not realize it until it sh gets shut off <laughs> right or you have electricity all the time you do not realize it until it, get, it gets shut off so it is sort of like that okay so th th these many of these assumptions you know are, are very intuitive you just have to think about how it compares with your day to day experience and, and you will understand that this is not this is not far fetched at all okay so that is what you are trying to do 
course as I said uh, the fourth assumption would be uh, inviscid flow inviscid flow and uh, fifth is uh, perfect gas but, but I think by now um, you never questioned the perfect gas assumption you have been brainwashed into supposing things are perfect <laughs> as far as the gases are concerned yeah um, actually that is quite true it, if somebody were to ever question I mean, is it really perfect most of the time yes the answer is do not worry about it okay most of the time in whatever we are dealing with the gases are indeed perfect this is one of the perfections that is uh, relatively true in, in, in reality so this, this is actually a uh, good assumption okay. So as I said earlier we do um, mass conservation and energy conservation as part of the uh, as part of the combustion problem but here we also have velocity okay so we have to worry about momentum conservation okay. so um, mass conservation we simply have to say d over dx of rho u a equal to 0 quite familiar to most of us okay um, from, from things like uh, gas dynamics okay um, and, and notice that we are using ordinary deriva derivatives okay it is as if like we do not even know how to write a partial derivative at this stage okay so we, we go step by step we are like uh, uh, with regard to learning combustion we are babies so we take baby steps towards partial derivatives just wait for a few more classes uh, then you will find too many partial derivatives for you to stomach <laughs> okay so uh, let us be happy with the ordinary derivatives at the moment so x momentum conservation uh, okay this is simply boiling down to your uh, one dimensional Euler uh, rho u I should say um, I think I made a I will just say uh, okay this is fine this is fine we will call this um, that say that essentially says the velocity is only a function of x we will now call that as u okay so that is what you are using okay rho u du over dx equal to 0 energy conservation. rho u a h plus u squared over 2 plus q q dot double prime times p this is capital p not the small p which is pressure so this is equal to 0 where capital p is the local perimeter okay that is p equals p of x okay the perimeter here um, refers to whatever happens here we are only keeping track of one dimension it could be like a box could be like a tube circular tube whatever it is so you have a perimeter there that goes with it uh, or in other words you are saying that the heat transfer is happening only along the walls we need to have an idea of how the perimeter happens there uh, at the wall and then uh, we have the species conservation that is um, rho u so let us let us just uh, fix this up like this rho u do y i divided by um, sorry d, d y i divided by d x plus omega i w i equal to 0 this should have been like this together should have been small w i that is for the source okay uh, the source essentially is like the number of uh, the, the, the I am sorry the, the amount of mass per unit volume per unit time is what we are saying. So this is mass flux times a uh, 
mass fraction derivative alright. So the, the mass flux times a mass fraction derivative will give you a volumetric um, rate of uh, flow okay. So this is essentially volumetric rate of flow omega i is the number of moles per unit time time per unit volume times its molecular weight will give you the mass uh, per unit time per unit volume okay. Um, notice something here we are not uh, okay I, I haven't derived this for you okay I am just writing this out and uh, I am not going to worry about how to derive this okay. We will derive a uh, the, the general species conservation equation in 3D pretty soon okay taking into account diffusion and all those things but at the moment I, I just assume that you can figure out how to derive this let us not worry about it. What I told you was while we were here I said typically we worry only about these two the energy and species okay and then I said because we are interested in the flow we have to worry about the momentum what is this and how is it different from this right this is mass conservation for an individual species so this is actually going as i equals 1 to n this is n equations anytime you look at a species conservation equation keep in mind it is actually n equations okay this is one equation for the mixture all right and that does not really have any production terms it does not it does not worry about this kind of a term why is that because in chemical reactions mass is conserved. So whatever is getting produced there must be something that correspondingly gets consumed in the mixture all right therefore we should not have to worry about it we will we will, we will come back to this uh, much more specifically when we do the uh, detailed three dimensional species conservation and derive the um, mixture mass conservation from there okay. Uh, but ultimately what, 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 would, what would it mean is the mixture does not even know that reactions are happening inside okay it is as if like for example when you were doing when we were uh, doing aerodynamics let us say. Okay, let us say you go to an aerodynamics class and then the aerodynamics professor is talking about flow past and airfoil and all that stuff and then he writes equations for mass conservation continuity equation and so on you cannot say stop you are doing aerodynamics that means this is air, air flow past an airfoil air contains oxygen nitrogen uh, all these things uh, these are all individual species where is the individual species conservation equations should really do that won't you you would not have to the mixture does not know that it has <laughs> it is actually a mixture even if nitrogen and oxygen were to react <laughs> that is that is a point okay? so so it is very interesting there uh, this is like a this, 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 this actually says something like a collective behavior okay as if the mixture did not exist this is collective behavior with a mix with, with taking cognizance of the mixture so it becomes it is part of the combustion problem okay. So that, that is a, there is a difference between taking cognizance of the mixture and not taking cognizance of the mixture. So well so how, how can we do this uh, how, how can we now deal with this so we can we can write uh, we, we now have to actually do some more jugglery and I hope we can do this now pretty soon we could write some of these equations as let us say you want to pick the first one you open up these brackets there and so you write this as 1 over rho d rho over dx plus 1 over u du over dx plus 1 over a d a over d x um, let me go a little further out and then write equal to 0 
you now begin to get the drift of why I am having the zero right at the, at the far end. Um, I want to point out that rho and u are unknowns here, but a is not an unknown, it is given. So 1 over a dA over dx is like a source term, okay. It is it is known to you, it is not an unknown, okay. Then the next equation you can now write this as rho u du over dx plus okay I'm just going to write dp over dx equal to 0 why am I spacing things out I'm beginning to see if I can write all the like derivatives one below the other and I'm going to now form a matrix okay so um, the next equation uh, you could write this as u du over dx plus dh over dx equal to 0 right but for the other ones you have to do some jugglery so let us try to do that quickly this is a lot of algebra so not much point in spending time so we notice that h is equal to uh, sigma yi hi when you are using small h use yi when you are using capital h you have to use ni ci on a, on a molar basis so dh over dx equal to um, sigma dy i over dx times hi plus sigma yi dhi over dx um, this is equal to sigma uh, d dy over dx times hi plus sigma yi partial do hi divided by partial t at constant p times dt over dx we want to bring in temperature okay um, so not, not contented with just enthalpy therefore we can write this as uh, sigma dyi over dx hi plus sigma yi small cpi dt over dx the dt over dx can be pulled out of the summation and then you have a summation yi cpi so this together um, is basically cp for the mixture okay so this is equal to sigma hi dyi over dx plus cp dt over dx keep this then you have another problem p equals rho r u t divided by w mix so this means that 1 over p dp over dx equal to 1 over rho d rho over dx plus 1 over t dt over dx minus 1 over w mix d w mix over dx oh my god okay we now have to worry about how the molecular weight of the mixture changes with space <laughs> okay terrible well of course we know how it changes it is supposed to change with the the composition and uh, the composition is given by yi's so we should simply be able to write the variation in the molecular mixture molecular weight in terms of variation in the composition therefore uh, but w mix is equal to sigma yi divided by wi hold the minus 1 um, so dw mix over dx can be written as minus w mix squared sigma um, 1 over wi uh, dyi over dx uh, so therefore dp over dx is 1 over rho d rho over dx plus 1 over t dt over dx plus the negative signs um, get together 
so you get a plus uh, w max sigma 1 over w i d y i over d x all right therefore what happens is you can plug this d p over d x over here okay d p over d x but it is going to now contain d rho over d x d t over d x and d y i over d x right. So uh, and of course the species equation for you um, already had a d y i over d x and this acts as a source term okay involving y i's and t of course therefore uh, it is coupled and um, we can write so we obtain uh, equations in terms of uh, in terms of well simply say rho u t and y i uh, so these are like four unknowns but keep in mind y i is actually a set of n unknowns and so you need to have a four set four equations where the last one being a set of equations that is exactly what we have okay. So solve this and live happily ever after I will see you Monday.